Welcome to another Airbrush Asylum video. In this three-part video, I'm going to show you how to airbrush this particular skull that you see here now. Um, we're going to render that in black and white first, and then we're going to show you how to add uh, real fire in green, and also tint the skull in the green tones. So you're going to learn all that over these three videos, so be sure to check them all out and watch the entire videos so that you know exactly how to do this particular artwork and create your own version of it. So instead of sketching this particular skull artwork onto the top of the chopper tank, what I've decided to do is make up a paper template. Um, so I've printed it out to scale just on regular A4 um, copy paper, so nothing flash. You can use your normal copy paper, that'll work fine. Um, and then using my X-Acto knife, I'm just carefully cutting out all of my eye sockets, the nostril sockets, and any of the main areas so that I don't need to actually sketch this particular design onto the tank. The beauty of that is that you don't have any uh, pencils or chalk pencils or any of that sort of nature going onto the surface. We are like basically just going to use um, paint, so that's always a benefit. Not that there's anything wrong with using pencil or chalk pencil. I mean, I used to do that with all of my artworks. I just seem to find that um, using the paper templates, it just kind of, uh, personally, I find it's a bit quicker and uh, also a little bit more accurate. And you just get a nicer finish overall because you're only using paint. You're not using any other um, sort of media to transfer that design on. But totally up to you. Whatever you feel comfortable will work, okay? So I've just, as mentioned before, cut out the sockets. I'm still leaving certain bits of detail in there. I'm even cutting out some of the cracks just to... Look, you could do them all freehand, but it just gives you a point of um, reference where everything else has to be freehanded off of that. So I use any of the major points and cut them out just so that they're in my design. And then I obviously render off that and um, just sort of make it up as I go from there using my reference. So now that we've pretty much finished our templates, we're going to start to now uh, transfer that particular uh, template onto the surface. So we want to sit that accurately where we want the skull artwork to go. So that's what I'm doing here at the moment. You can see I've, I've got some just um, real fine, I think it's 5mm uh, fine line tape. This is just the masking tape style. So that's just so that I can align this particular negative template up so that I can get that um, skull positioned correctly in the center of the tank. You'll notice that there is some masked up areas of the tribal sort of flame uh, artwork which was already previously done on this particular um, tank and this project. So that was all done by another person. This tank was actually damaged. Um, so the repair is done by a friend of ours in the industry and they've asked us to just complete the skull artwork with the green true fire or real fire, whatever you want to call it. Um, so that's what we're going to show you in this video, how to complete that skull and the green fire on this particular chopper tank.
So you also notice here that I'm using a spirit level just as an added little technique to get that all level and correct so that my negative space is sprayed on correctly and that the skull sits level on the tank. Another thing that I'm going to do just to triple check is uh, the edges of my design obviously are masked up. So I'm just going to use a red pencil here just to pick up the edge of that line. So where the fine line tape is so that way um, it will transfer, it will make a mark. You can see there it's now starting to show through. And I'll do that on both sides. You can see again that's where it's masked up and then I've got two points where I can measure back into my uh, negative paper template there to make sure that I'm reasonably close. So just using a mini ruler I'm just checking that measurement on both sides and I'm pretty happy with the positioning so I'm going to leave that there and we're going to start to apply the base for the first step of the artwork. Okay, so I'm going to start off with a Payne's Grey. So the reason I'm spraying that over this is because obviously our surface is black and the sockets and everything um, which I've cut out with my paper template will need to be sprayed in a dark colour. So what I need to do is put this Payne's Grey down first. Um, so I'm just using my HPC SE clips for that. And um, once I've done that, then I can use my paper template, um, add the, the black uh, for the eye sockets and the nostrils, and that's going to show up. And also, it's, it's just a nice base, a mid-tone for when I'm doing my rendering with the white. So it sort of kind of cuts a little bit of a step out. So it allows you to, um, if you control your white and do your black accurately, you can almost just get away with using just white and transparent black, which is exactly what I'm going to show you how to do in this three-part video. So now that I've let that dry, you don't have to, it's not going to take too long, um, you know, sort of say 10-15 minutes of drying time or if you want to give it a little bit longer depending on your climate that's fine. Uh, I'm now applying my positive mask and just taping that into place. And then using my airbrush again this time with the transparent black. So this is made up of using uh, Trident transparent base, you mix that with your reducer and then you add your drops of black to that until you're happy with how strong um, the mix is. This is fairly strong and fairly dark so um, if you're just starting out with this you may want to add an extra step therefore make your first tone a lot lighter. Okay so instead of say for argument's sake if I've added 20 drops of black to my mix to have it almost black maybe add 10 you know, instead. So do it that way and then do your last one at a 20, 20 drop ratio. So whatever it is, just sort of um, work it out from there if you need to do it or not. I'm just folding up some of the edges of the template to add some shading while I've got this all masked up. So I obviously created the cut um, but it's allowing me to just fold those up so that I can uh, accurately add those shadows in those areas. So just going over a few of the areas again, just to darken some of those spots, especially in the eye sockets, we want a bit of a gradation rather than just a solid uh, tone. And you can see here that the uh, 
it's already started to transfer so I've just checked it but um, I want to go darker again so just spraying in those areas that I want to go a bit darker before I remove the template and another good thing is you always uh, you can keep this template obviously so if you need to come back in at a later stage and just sharpen up any areas or re-darken a spot and you want to utilize the template then by all means you can do so so don't chuck it out once you've done this step Okay, so now we are starting with Trident White. We're going to start to build all of our tonal values. So using the white only, uh, the white is thinned to about 30% paint, 70% reducer, and I've dropped my pressure down to about 15 to 20 psi. And I'm using my Awada CMSB Micron. So I'll pop some links to in the description to affiliate links for this product if you're interested as well as the Eclipse so check those out as well. And I'm just going to start to now build all of my toning using the white only. So use the white as if this is your only color that you're going to use. see here I'm using a template to start to build my texture on the skull so very important um, and I like to do this in the white stage just so that I um, add layers of texture as I go rather than just having a flat smooth surface as the airbrush does create that smooth blend which is really uh, handy for blending but when you want to have an uneven sort of bone appearance then you need to utilize other methods to create that so whether or not that might be scratching back um, if you're using say a synthetic paper or on or doing this on an aluminium panel um, but then your surface would want to be white um, in this particular case obviously my surface is black it's a top of a um, custom motorcycle tank so I'm utilizing these texture templates to do that for me the template that you just saw me use, and I will be using more throughout this video, is the uh, Microdot template by Drew Blair. Um, it's available from schoolofrealism.com, and I'll also pop a link to that in the description for you. So you can see I'm still building my white tone. So just constantly looking at my reference um, and just creating all the different highlights first so sticking to the white sections first just to build and going extremely bright with those and then sort of uh, feathering out from that spot just to create uh, the difference in blend and um, to build up you know the value so that I know where I've got to come back in with my shadows and the other areas obviously where it's going to stay lighter I will leave I do apologize for the lighting on this video. Uh, it was filmed when I was painting late at night and uh, just the angle of it with the lighting, it just seemed to have this horrible reflection. I've done everything in my power to edit this in such a way as far as the coloring. Um, you know, I've adjusted the levels and all that sort of stuff because I definitely wanted to release this particular video. I didn't want to just skip it because I thought it still had a lot of value to you guys. So hopefully you can get enough from it. But um, yeah, look, usually we're always, we've got the camera looking good and, and, and it's always um, clear enough for you guys. So I hope this still 
is helpful, um, but I do apologise uh, just for the, the, the bad lighting on this particular one. So hopefully it won't happen again, but this was a very rushed project. We had to get this done in virtually a weekend, so it was virtually just film it, do it, get it done, get it back. Um, usually we've got a lot more time, so be a bit more lenient on me on this particular video and uh, I do hope that you still get lots out of it and you enjoy it regardless. So again, as well as using texture templates, you'll notice here I'm using my Art Tool uh, True Fire template by Mike Lavalle. So these are available, as I mentioned, from Art Tool. We also sell them throughout Australia. So if you're keen, jump on our website or you can visit our affiliate links uh, for any purchases that you need uh, if you are located overseas. They are very handy just to get your sharp edges in in certain spots and um, obviously I use them all the time to create my real fire which you will see later on in this video. So it's a bit of a slow process the white but we need to be as accurate as possible. This is essentially your sketch. Uh, this is going to be the foundation for the darker tone so you want to be um, trying to be as accurate as possible the more time you spend on this the better it will look in the end so don't just whack white on willy-nilly and don't just sort of uh, like saturate the surface with white so that the whole artwork is flat you'll notice that I'm leaving gaps and that's where the use of the gray you can now see the value in using the gray um, because the gaps are almost already um, creating my darker toning and um, then the white is just accentuating that and then once we come in with our thinned out black mix the transparent black that's going to deepen all of our shadows and we're going to really get that 3d effect happening so all that's going to be covered in the other parts of these videos so as I mentioned um, at the start of this video there are three parts to this so be sure to check out all three parts so that you can make sure that you know how to do this process from start to finish and you can have a play around with your own versions of it So obviously for your fine detail you want to be up nice and close with the airbrush. Uh, you can see I'm uh, still a little bit away from the surface, like I'm not touching uh, because obviously this is the first tone. Uh, I don't need to be as accurate as I would need to if I was doing a really fine uh, black line. So uh, just you still want to be uh, nice and neat and as, as detailed as possible. but. Um, yeah, just play around with the height to whatever airbrush you're using as well. So back with my micro dot template, adding some more texturing in there as well. You notice before I used the texture template in the eye as well, just to get a bit of uh, sort of detail in the sockets so that they're not just flat black. Just going to speed up the video a little bit through this step now. You've seen uh, how I get the texturing on there as well as following my reference to pick out all of my highlighted areas so I thought we may as well fast forward a little bit through this so you get the idea. So if this is your first time to our channel or watching one of our videos feel free to hit subscribe, tap on that bell icon and that will notify you every time we put out new content. We would love to have you as part of our community 
and uh, we try and do weekly videos so all sorts of different stuff step by steps you know insights into products updates and much more so if you are interested in airbrushing and you want to learn more you're just starting out or even if you're a professional and you want to hone your skills or you just like to watch airbrush up for the entertainment value then by all means uh, join us and uh, we look forward to delivering plenty of content that relates to airbrushing and pretty much anything that's art related Okay, so we're going to start working on the forehead now, once we do these last little bits and pieces on the nostril. So you can see I'm going over certain areas to brighten them up even more. So you'll notice I'm moving around quite a bit in in different spots on the artwork so letting a section dry then coming back in and brightening it up adding some highlights for the cracks there on the side and for the highlights that aren't as bright I'm just dusting them in from more of a distance a few dot white highlights to build texture so I like to do a mix with the texture I like to obviously use the texture templates as seen before the micro dot one as well as the texture template um, and then there it is again so I'll use that I'll also what I'll do with the texture template is I lift it up from the surface and I drag it as I'm painting so that gives you a nice effect it's not as harsh everywhere so rather than just sitting the template flat on the surface and spraying heavily, by moving it, you're getting that uh, uneven texture and a bit of that motion, which really looks, um, looks really effective. But have a play around with it yourself and see what you can come up with. So just building some of those brighter spots, being close to the edge so I get a nice sharp uh, finish. I don't want to overspray too much. I'm not too concerned um, as I'm going to be adding the fire. So there's, you know, it's, it's going to be hidden at the end of it. But um, you want to get in the habit of being nice and neat because there might be times when you're not going to put in a heavy background or you know you want to maybe just do something subtle then it's just going to save you a lot of time that's all
So now we're rendering the teeth. So same procedure as with all of our other white areas. So look at your reference, pick out the highlights and then work from there and just uh, be nice and accurate with it. Obviously the teeth you have to be a little bit more careful so you want to um, really pay close attention to that reference when creating these. So you'll notice my finger hanging right over the trigger there. That's um, just a comfortable way to hold it and you're using the join in your finger to pull back on that trigger. So just once you get the hang of it, when I was first attempting to airbrush like this, because I've always airbrushed with my finger dead straight on the button, but by putting my finger over the front, it seems to have just made it a bit easier for long-term airbrushing. And when you're airbrushing for hours and hours, like my finger doesn't tend to get as sore as it used to, or hardly sore at all. So it's uh, less fatigue on your finger because of the motion that you're doing. And um, it also allows for a lot more control. So it's just a matter of getting the feel for it because when I did do it initially, I was slipping back off the trigger a lot, like I was sort of pulling back too quickly. But um, yeah, I got the feel for it. So I highly recommend you give it a go, especially if you've got an airbrush with no cup or a side cup, then it allows you to do that a lot easier than one where the cup is kind of a little bit larger and then your finger sort of has to go to the side of that.
So just uh, getting through and finishing off those teeth. Again, up nice and close with your airbrush for this particular um, area. Same as when we did the top teeth, just so that you've got nice uh, control and you keep everything uh, reasonably sharp. So it looks like a little bit of a muddle in there on some of those teeth, but I'll adjust that as we go on. I'm also uh, keeping in mind that the lower jaw won't need as much detailing. Uh, the reason being is we're going to have fire coming out of the mouth. Okay, so keep that in mind as well because why spend all this time on certain areas that are going to get kind of covered a little bit uh, when you don't need to, all right? Especially if you're doing it for a, a business where you are, you know, time is money. So then you want to obviously keep that in mind. You don't want to spend all these hours rendering that bottom jaw and then you come over it with, you know, fire and, and lose half of it. So you also still need to be wary of how much of it will be covered. So you want still enough detail there so that it all um, shines through because we want that fire to have that transparent appearance. But yeah, just something to be wary of when you're doing your artwork. So here we're just completing our final toning for the first stage of this particular artwork. So all of our white underpainting is now done. So be sure to check out part two and that's when we're going to further detail this particular artwork. And then in part three you're going to get a chance to see how all the flames are added. So I do hope that you enjoyed watching part one of this video. I look forward to showing you part two. Until next time, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork, and thanks again for watching. Bye for now.